So in this video, we're going to walk through the steps of the first derivative test, but first we need to know what the first derivative test is. So our motivation here is that we want to know which critical numbers are the local maximums, which are the local minimums, and which are neither. So our critical numbers are our possible values that correspond to maximums or minimums, and they occur when the derivative is zero or undefined. So we want a process that we can follow to determine which critical numbers are which, and this process is what we're going to call the first derivative test. It's called this because it uses the first derivative to test the critical numbers. The first derivative test has two goals. The first goal is to determine the critical numbers. And remember, the critical numbers are the locations where the derivative is equal to zero and the locations where the derivative is undefined. Then our second task is going to be to classify the critical numbers to determine which are local maximums and which are local minimums. And to do this, we're going to test to see if the derivative changes from positive to negative, that would be a local maximum, or if it changes from negative to positive, that would be a local minimum. And of course, we'll also take note of the places where neither of these things happen. So maybe we are increasing, we level out and we continue increasing, or we decrease, level out and continue decreasing. So this is the main idea of the first derivative test, but to really get us going on what it looks like, I'm gonna give us an example and go through the steps with you. So let's consider the function k, where k of x is equal to negative 2 thirds x squared plus 4x. And our tasks are going to be to find the critical points of k, so identify those critical numbers, and then we want to classify those critical numbers as either local maximums or local minimums. So what we need to remember for answering this problem is that the critical numbers or the critical points occur when the derivative is equal to zero and where the derivative is undefined. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to find the derivative. Starting with the first term, the negative two thirds we can handle on its own and then we need to take the derivative of x squared. So the derivative of x squared is two x, that two comes in front and the exponent decreases from two to one. And then we add the derivative of four x, which is just four. So now we've taken the derivative successfully, we just need to simplify. So negative two thirds times two x is negative four thirds x, and then plus four. And I'm just gonna write our reminder here about how the critical points occur when the derivative is equal to zero, just to help guide our next couple of steps. So if we're trying to find the critical numbers, we're going to need to take this derivative, negative four thirds x plus four, and set it equal to zero. So again, k prime of x is going to be set equal to zero, and so we have negative four thirds x plus four equals zero, and we'll solve for x. So I'll just add the four thirds x over to the right hand side, so I have four equals four thirds x. We'll multiply by the reciprocal of four thirds, that's multiplying by three fourths, to get the x isolated on one side. So we have four times three fourths on the left hand side, those fours cancel out, and we're just left with x equals three. You might have a slightly different way of doing this, but hopefully we feel comfortable solving for x with this linear function. So negative four thirds x plus four, just move stuff around until you get x equals three. So we've successfully found the critical numbers, and so we've completed step one. We found the derivative, we set it equal to zero, we solved for all the solutions, we got one solution, and it's x equals three. One more thing, so I forgot to write it here, but critical points also occur when the derivative is undefined. Our derivative is just a line, it's negative four thirds x plus four, so there aren't any places where it's undefined, so we don't need to worry about that in this case. For this particular function, our only critical point occurs when the derivative is equal to zero. Now we move into what I actually think of as the first derivative test. So this is where we're going to classify this critical number of x equals three. So the way I do this is I like to draw a number line and place all of my critical numbers on the number line. Then what we're going to do is test the intervals created by that critical number. So we have an interval from negative infinity to three and an interval from three to infinity. Okay, so remember the derivative is zero at x equals three, but we don't know what the derivative is before three or after three. And we wanna find out, is it increasing then decreasing? Is it decreasing then increasing? What's going on with the slope or what's going on with the derivative around that point three? We're gonna answer that question so we can determine if three is the location of a local maximum or a local minimum. So to do this, we're going to pick a point in each interval. I'm calling this a test point. So before three, let's pick zero, and after three, let's pick four. 
you could pick whatever number you want as long as it's in the interval. So I'm picking a number less than three and a number greater than three. And what we wanna do with these test points is find the sign of the derivative at those points. We wanna determine whether the derivative is positive or negative in each interval. So we're going to take these test points and substitute them into the equation of our derivative to find whether the slope is positive or negative at these points. So when I put zero into the derivative, I get negative four thirds times zero plus four. That's zero plus four, which is four. And that's a positive number. Four is a positive number. So the slope at zero is positive. And every point in this interval from negative infinity up until we get to three is going to have a positive derivative. It's increasing until it gets to three, at which point it becomes zero. That is the slope becomes zero at three. So next we do the same thing for our second test point. I'm substituting in four into my derivative, negative four thirds times four plus four. I'm getting negative 16 thirds plus four. Then I can just do some simplifying with fractions. Specifically, I'm going to rewrite four as 12 over three. Then we have a common denominator. So negative 16 thirds plus 12 thirds is negative four thirds. That's a negative value. The slope at four is negative four thirds, it's negative. So this means in the interval from three to infinity, the function is decreasing, it has a negative derivative. So we've determined that before three, the function is increasing, and then after three, it decreases. And we know that it changes only at that point three, because three is the only place where the derivative is equal to zero. Then we know that when the function changes from increasing to decreasing, as you can see in this picture too, this is a local maximum of the function. So we know that at x equals three, the function k has a local maximum. All right, so those are the steps we follow for the first derivative test. We find the critical numbers, we put them on a number line, we pick a point in each interval created by those critical numbers, and we test them by plugging them into the derivative. We wanna know what is the sign of the derivative at those points? Is it positive or negative? And that can help us determine which values, which critical numbers correspond to local maximums or local minimums. All right, well, that's it for this first example using the first derivative test. This example only had one critical point, so if you're interested in seeing another example with more than one critical number, I have another video where I go through more examples using this first derivative test. Awesome, well, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.